Okay, I promised a review of this book that I just finished, um, Zero Time Space by Gunter Nimps and Astrid Heibel, How Quantum Tunneling Broke the Light Speed Barrier, and with the Ford by Ulrich Walter. This book, it's, um... It's really fascinating. It's very clearly written. People complain about the, um, that it wasn't translated well. But, uh, there's just some minor glitches in the grammar. You know, no big deal. I mean, you can figure out the meaning just on, just like a, Every once in a while, there'll be like, uh, maybe something's supposed to be plural and it's not plural, that kind of thing. It's no big deal. And so, um, basically, there's, you can tell the font is really big. There's a lot of images. He goes, he starts off with the whole history of science and... Um, it's just explaining basic concepts of science. And what I want to get to here is the, um, the uh, phase, the group, group velocity of the phase. So he, he ends up going back to De, De Broglie. He's really relying on Louis De Broglie in the end of here and um, so he starts out just going over standard science, but the whole okay, so the whole you know concept of velocity. And one of the so this is Newton's cradle, and I didn't know that this that this that uh, that's what this is called, but um, the pulse without moving. So the balls don't move, but the pulse moves. And so that, that introduces this idea of like the signal being a non-physical energy. Okay, and then here you get into the phase wave. So this is the phase of the wave. So the phase is faster than the signal. And the signal is the... um the uh, frequency so the um this this is e as an energy is based on the frequency so this is the group wave and then the signal is part of the group wave but and you have to have the signal b you know, part of a group wave, so that limits the signal to a specific frequency wavelength. That is a materialistic measurement. And therefore, you're limited to a linear causality. But within the signal, the phase is faster. And... And that's why you get a superluminal um, speed overall. Okay, so that's interesting in itself. But then he goes on to explain that that superluminal speed is actually a quantum um, zero tunneling that's... Um, so here's an here's a empirical proof of this um, signal tunneling, um, but anyway, I'm, I'm gonna. So the the phase is based on the half because it's digital. So you're using half of the. Um, it's not based on the amplitude. It's based on the the phase as 
as half of the um, frequency. So you don't have to... So the, classically, the um, intensity of the signal is an inverse square that... Um, so it, it exponentially decreases in intensity. Um, but the... Oh, I lost my focus here. Jeepers. Okay, so I can't, I'm trying to see through the book. Okay, so now he's getting into the quantum tunneling here. And so basically, he sets up three different, there's three different ways you can do this quantum tunneling. And, um, okay, so yeah, he goes into how, you know, radiation is based on quantum tunneling. Um, and so it's supposed to be inherently unpredictable, but when you set up, when you set it up as an optics experiment, you are utilizing the inherent, um, <coughs> constructive and deconstructive interference based on the wavelength and the frequency. And, uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, so here he's talking about how when you create a dielectric, a diode, you're changing the, um, whether it has a hole or it's a, you know, where the junction is based on the electrons, you know, the valence or the conduction. And that's, that changes the, the type of energy needed for quantum tunneling. And so it, you know, it gets complicated really fast, but, um, and then he uses how the, you know, the Feynman, F Richard Feynman diagram for quantum tones because it's virtual. Okay, so then you get all the frequencies, and, um, okay, so these are the three different kinds of tunneling he does. So one of them, you, using, again, the wavelength, that so you have interference that's, destructive or or constructive then you have like a tube where you cut off the higher and lower frequencies so it's the um the cross section it has to be um smaller than half the wavelength of the transmitting wave uh so that's that's how you limit that that's another way of limiting these are the examples and this is the one that I had, I already knew about this one, which is the double prism. Uh, so that's three different ways he's getting this quantum tunneling effect by utilizing the interference, the constructive interference. So he gives the example how, you know, it's based on refraction. So like if you put a spoon in the water, then the light, you see it's refracted. And so based on the different um, density of the medium, you know, you get a different refraction. Um, this is called the fisheye effect, right? So the, so the double prism is utilizing the air being a less dense than the... the um, so he's talking about here photonics. And but what, what's fascinating is Newton actually... Um, Newton actually hypothesized that, in fact, what's happening is there is a shift, shift of the light when it's refracted. And so apparently that shift is what's causing this slight, um, when the refraction occurs, because of that shift, you're getting this quantum tunneling induced. Um, so... Within this time, you have a zero uh, phase that's an infinite speed. It's non-local and virtual as the imaginary uh, negative frequency. But because the signal itself has to refract and then carry on through here, then it, it's just a superluminal signal overall, you know, um, based on a classical, what they call evanescent, because the um, 
intensity is an exponential uh, decrease as it gets. Uh, that's why it's an evanescence that disappears exponentially. So, um, so this is the evanescence, uh, dis the exponential disappearance of the strength of the signal as it goes through the prism. And um, so this was postulated way back by Bose in 1897. This is just it's pretty fascinating. And this is how he set up the first experiment, you know, with the detector over here and the emitter going through the double prism. Okay, so now you got these the construction and destructive interference. And you can see how this connects back to the music theory, the whole issue. If you have, um, you know, two-thirds and three-halves and they're destructive, essentially this is the exact same concept of the non-commutative phase of the, the music theory. Um, and so, um, all right. So then, so what happens is because of the destructive interference, um, you end up getting a quantum tunneling. Like it weeds out all the classical signals and what remains is the quantum tunneling at the very end. Okay, so, all right. I don't have all the details there. So then this is the other way. This is the third way. And so you can't have a frequency that's bigger, that's, you know, has to be within this range, within that range overall, in order, otherwise it would go through here and it wouldn't quantum tunnel. If it's too small, it'll fit within that. If it's too big, it, it won't fit in here. Okay, so those are the three ways you're getting this quantum tunneling effect. And so he proved that, you know, you can even send Mozart through this. And so the the final um the final message of this is that he proved that it is just an inverse of the frequency and that any particle is actually defined by the de Broglie um, wavelength or the frequency, so that the again the energy can change, but the um, phase signal is just the the phase difference. Even though all the intensity changes, the virtual signal is just the um, the de Broglie frequency. And here they even did it with a nano uh, buckyball with a 660 carbon uh, mo er, molecules. So the, um, okay, anyway, let's see. So the point being that the, um, here he gets into the causality of it, and he just says that, you know, within the tunneling time, you cannot observe the signal. But, the, but it's proven that this signal is the inverse of the frequency, which is, again, precisely the same um, non-commutative uh, time frequency secret, is that it's based on the, you know, it's either two-thirds or three-halves. So you're inverting the frequency and the time in order to get the tunneling. What he's calling quantum tunneling is actually non-commutativity whether the signal is reversed or the signal is, um, you know, passed on in a superliminal manner. So it's the oscillation time. It's the one, it's the oscillation time is the inverse of the frequency, you know, no matter what the amplitude is. Um, and so then he's saying how, you know, if you go through this chart, he's proven that, Every every experiment that has proven this, it's all based on the reciprocal of the frequency. So the the signal is superluminal, and as inverse to the frequency as the signal, but the actual um, tunneling, the actual um, tunneling itself is virtual as as being zero 
and infinity. Okay, so that's, that covers the concept. And then he goes into whether that can enable teleportation or warp drive, um, you know, for uh, space-time travel and all that at the very end. And I'll just leave it at that. And there he is. It's, it's just super awesome book. So um, just takes an open mind. And it's based on the exact same concept that I had discovered in high school on my own. That the um, you get this zero infinite um, reality that's non -lo non local based on the inverse of the time and the frequency. So I'll just leave it at that. And thanks very much.